Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and in some places, good morning. Welcome to this new uh, the, the new episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. And indeed, you're going to see something different. We got a lot of friends joining us today, folks. Most of the regular panel had, you know, some family stuff that they had to take care of. We'll get, you know, Kaysante back next week. We'll get Everborn Saga back next week. But we do have a lot of guests and we do, of course, have our returning panel brother, Hargeet Chani. First of all, sir, welcome. I love the fact that you're <laughs> selling an Xbox first party game on PlayStation right behind you, brother. I, I love the slander. <laughs> Why not, right? So this will be an interesting one, right? Because last uh, year we had God of War Ragnarok bundle. Uh, and that was the only one, right? So now we have two bundles, Spider-Man and this. So we'll see how the Spider-Man sales do. But uh, But hey, Modern Warfare 3, going to get all that cash. It's, it, you know, Sony. it's funny. People get, I saw a lot of people really getting angry with that. Like, oh, I'm going to boycott Call of Duty. I'm never buying it again. <laughs> yeah, and right. I'm just, I'm, just, uh -huh. I'm just like, you lying, Saka. You know what? I mean, come on. Sony's you ain't got nothing to else to play. So what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to play? Kill? Play they're they're, they're, they're going to go play Kill Zone or SOCOM 4. Oh, that's right. Those <laughs> servers are gone, baby. Yeah, because Spider Man <laughs> is over in about a week. What else are you going to do? <laughs> uh, wait for well, hell divers or hell, yeah hell divers it should be good uh but you know at the end of the day Hargit, it's great to have you here we we have some really powerful topics to get into especially if you are an xbox fan yeah. uh yesterday satya nadala made a very very pointed statement regarding the future of investment in xbox Called the it the third Father. pillar, the third pillar of Microsoft. And I'm here to tell you, folks, when they say yeah. that he's all in on gaming, um, all I can say is that, uh, you know, the, the media and the, and the gaming community, the PlayStation community, have been poking and poking and prodding and making fun of. And now the giant is awake. The giant who has 10 times the amount of spendable money that, than Sony does and Sony finds themselves in a bit of a pickle uh, because not only do they have they, they don't have games, PlayStation has no games, folks. Spider Man, sure, but after that, that's it. But it's What's that, that phrase with the New York accent, boom. Somebody woke up a sleeping giant. Yeah, somebody <laughs> indeed, indeed. Sir X Man, brother, good mo uh, good afternoon, brother. How you feeling? Welcome. I'm feeling good. I'm amongst friends. Let's go. Let's get to this because I'm ready. I've been ready for a minute. Yeah, well, it's great I've been to have you here, for two years what's what's happening to Sony. And now all my parishions are coming true. This is going to be fun. Well, I mean, there's, <laughs> well, there's a lot to get into. So real quick, uh, OBM, first of all, yes, brother, sir. welcome back. It's great to have you here. I know we only got you for an hour because you got to actually get back to work. But yeah. we're going to open up with you and we're going to get right into what Satya had to say. And then, of course, we're going to back end that conversation with the Starfield numbers which we learned yesterday is not only do they have 11 million players, but it was the largest and most subscribers to Xbox Game Pass in the services history when Starfield launched. Big numbers, brother. How you doing? I'm good, man. Uh, yeah, it's been another another interesting week for, uh, for topics and uh, to look back at some narratives over the, the course of the year. So... Uh, Absolutely looking forward to to diving into some of this with you guys. Uh, yeah, like you mentioned, I got to today's today's a busy day. It's end of my fiscal year, which is mm -hmm. uh, for for what I do means that I'm pretty busy and I'm maybe, maybe pulling a late nighter tonight. But uh, I thought I'd take a break for an hour and and uh, come here and, and chat with you guys. And, uh, you know, and, and really just a lot of interesting things to talk about right now in the in the industry. Yeah, there is. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot to get into, and unfortunately, John Wolf, or fortunately, because you know you you know you like hanging around out there with the gremlins known as uh, <laughs> J Rock, and uh, pointing out, of course, got to throw also the Black Viking in there, who has been doing a little poking and prodding himself regarding Sony seemingly falling apart, or as like King David likes to say. The Rome is in fact burning. How you doing, John? Welcome. No, that's not true, Boom. What are you talking about? Rome is burning, okay? We're perfectly fine. <laughs> Our leader abandoned us, but that's not a problem. The, the 
the person in charge of our games left us high and dry, but that's not a problem. Everything's okay. The house behind me is burning, but everything's okay. I got plenty of water to put it out. Okay? We're gonna be fine. We got Call of Duty coming in a bundle. Oh, wait, that's an Xbox game. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, John. I love you so much, bro. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Boom. Thanks for thanks for uh inviting me tonight, brother. I know that you were short a couple of guests, and I was actually on Call of Duty when you sent me that message. I'm like, let me get off and let me uh give Boom a, a helping hand there because I know he's a, he's down a few guests. Uh what OBM, pleasure always, brother. Hargeet, of course, and Sir X Man. We're gonna bring that heat tonight, guys. Yeah, yeah, we absolutely are. And look, at the end of the day, um, the tide is turning, folks. Um, and, you know, when when you look at 2023 as a whole um, and you look at what Xbox has accomplished, uh, you know, professionally with acquiring ABK, um, you know, delivering on their promise to repair the first party situation that has plagued the brand for for quite some time and of course reinvigorating gamers as a whole with so many games in xbox game pass that we don't know actually what to do with ourselves right there's literally a smorgasbord of games and of course on top of all of that goodness they deliver an unbelievable outstanding e3 show followed by an amazing developer direct. And of course, the hits just keep coming because today's show, even though to some people, you know, some people were like, it's a three, it's a five, it's a six. King David gave it a six out of 10. I walked away and I went back and I watched it in four in 4K. I rewatched the event. It was only 30 minutes, very easy to do. And I feel comfortable giving it an eight because even though not every game is for me per se, I look over at the other side and I say, look at Pong Soul. Pong Soul's out there tweeting two of the games that I had no interest in, he couldn't stop talking about. So I'm saying, well, wait a second. Maybe this, maybe this is an eight. Because you know what? We got a chance to see uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, Delta, Snake Eater for the mm. first time in Unreal Engine 5. That right? looked unbelievable, by it the way. It looked crazy good. We got a chance to see... Some RoboCop gameplay that releases next week. I can't freaking wait. That's oh going to be so God. violent, right? Of course, we got to see Alan Wake, Wake 2. 2. And I'm going to be honest with you, folks. In the years past, these games have been locked up by PlayStation for marketing deals. It's not, in fact, the case now, which is pretty, pretty interesting. But look, OBM... Let's just rip the Band-Aid right off. Stony oh is burning. <laughs> right? They, 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 they have lost their leader. They got rid of someone that helped them launch some of their biggest IPs in the company's history. And they didn't even just let her go. And, we, and, and this story came to us, and they got to get credit where credit is due. You know, I don't, I don't always agree with him. David Jaffe, former developer of Sony, who obviously worked on IP classics like Twisted Metal, and God of War broke a story on his channel yesterday that Connie Booth, who is an OG uh, at, at PlayStation, has been uh, responsible for launching some of their biggest IPs in the brand's history. He reported originally that she was let go. Turns out he, he, he got some more information this morning. He did another video. She was fired. Okay, so... On top of losing Jim Ryan, on top of losing Connie Booth and her entire staff, who apparently walked off the job out of disgust, right? We have them making some of the worst decisions in gaming history, right? It, but you know, according to some Sony fans, now everything's okay. We're we're good. You know, we have Spider Man too. Okay, put that in your back pocket because now I want to focus on Satya Nadala. He went out there. He made a couple of pre pretty big statements, and he has confirmed, OBM, that not only have 11 million people played Starfield, which, by the way, has exploded their expectations on how many players they're going to get on this game, but the day of launch, we have confirmation, folks, 
that Game Pass saw its most subscribers in any one day in the services history. Okay, on top of that, we have him making the statement that he is that Microsoft is doubling down on production and investment in Xbox, calling it a, a not only an important pillar, the third pillar of Microsoft. Let's talk about this because you see people after round, and I think now they have found out that Microsoft is not is, is not messing around, right? We know that there's some word that the board was out there potentially looking for another acquisition. They're looking to make more investments to make more money. I, I think that when you look at what Sony is doing, some people say it, trimming the fat, some people saying setting themselves up to be purchased by Apple. We don't know what's going to happen to Sony, but I can tell you they f around, they f around, and now they're about to find out. Let's talk about it. You woke a sleeping giant. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a uh, so a lot to, lot to unpack there. And if I look distracted, it's because my cat wants to, like share my. I don't know what it is, man. Every time he hears me on a mic, he uh, he comes up here and, and tries to get some screen time. But anyways, uh, <laughs> just my girlfriend gets... does that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so a lot of different things unpacked there. And I do think, you know, gosh, I, like as you were talking, there was like five different things I was like, oh, that's a topic to talk about. Now, and so I'll try to focus on a couple things. Um, I think one, you know, yeah, we can definitely kind of identify contrast. I don't know too much about the inner workings of Sony. Like I haven't really, uh, you know, spent a lot of time really trying to understand completely everything. So I, I almost look at their business as somebody who's, uh, you know, is completely an outsider. I don't really have friends that work at Sony or things like that. I do know some people at Microsoft and I was telling people back, in, you know, before the, the series launch that, you know, based on what I was told at the time, like this is before Bethesda was even purchased or even knew that was a possibility that, uh, that like some huge things were coming. And the reason why, as you said, you know, the way that they reorganized, you know, back in two, late 2017 when they promoted Phil, like the, the way they placed gaming at that time was was telling. Like before they ever spent a dollar, it was like the, the way this, this is set up, it, they are setting it up as as one of the, uh, you know, main components of, of Microsoft. It's no longer sitting under Windows. And in fact, it was... Uh, from all indications going to be bigger than Windows. Um, and so we're starting to see a lot of that stuff come to fruition in the last few years. So kind of was, I, you know, I used to argue with some of my buddies about that. And, and um, it, you know, in, in a lot of the, you know, conversation back then as well, like, you know, Microsoft doesn't need gaming. Uh, they're, they're never going to put as much behind it as some of the other companies because, you know, they don't have as much skin in the game. But it's really, uh, you know, the thing I was been trying to uh, was trying to communicate is that they are somebody that is positioning themselves to put that skin in the game. And now we see that they have it right uh, with <laughs> investing nearly 100 billion dollars over the last couple of years. Um you know, looking at it from Sony's side, I you know we talked about the Jim Ryan stuff before. The only thing I really, I, I usually stay kind of stay out of a lot of the conversations because I don't know much about them. Uh, but I would say, you know, just from a gamer standpoint, I didn't really see. Uh, I saw a lot of happen things, you know, with them when it came to like sort of in on subscriptions, you know, kind of in on gas, kind of you know, it was like a, a lot of different things they were, you know spreading themselves out to but i didn't really see exactly where like they were what was going to be like the centerpiece of of where of their future normally you would have thought you know just like nintendo like they would have you know leaned into uh where their identity was built and things like that and they still have those games but we do see like a lot of that's been diluted um you saw that when when sean Layden left you saw that you know he said you know this this is not sustainable uh, the market's just not going to, you know, allow us to keep, you know, keep doing what we've been doing, making the same games with the same people. And, uh, you know, and I, you look at what, you know, Jim Ryan was trying to diversify them. But, you know, again, it, it, it came at some of their core strengths as well, right? Like you had Naughty Dog spending time on that. And now you hear some of the things from Jaffe, um, you know, you know, 
he generally, you know, agree with Jeffy or not. Uh, generally, he what he's telling you, he believes. <laughs> so, uh, so he believes yeah. in the people he knows at Sony that that uh, it, you know it, it could it could be miscommunicated. It could be one person that's not right. But based on what he's believing, uh, you know, this is a situation where some of the people are not happy with with that direction. And I, you know, I mentioned it before that um, you know pivoting towards pivoting towards multiplayer gas gas is hard multi going to multiplayer from single player is hard going to different genres is hard but but trying to go from a single player to a multiplayer to a live service is like uh that's going from like freshman you know up to varsity right like that's that is that is extremely hard and it is a extremely competitive market where the market leaders generally spend ungodly amounts of money, you know, to kind of, to keep their customers engaged. It is very difficult to crack if you're trying to get into top 10, top 15, you know, games consistently across different platforms. I mean, we saw that with Halo, right? Halo is a great playing game and it's not necessarily, and it's making, it's made some, some comeback, but let's be honest. It's not, it's not up there with, you know, with the apexes and the, the call of duties and the Fortnites and things like that. So, so yeah, there's there is a uh, a contrast, and I guess the thing that really stood out to me, because uh, you have the shot on the one hand, the Sean Layden saying, you know, hey, this this is not sustainable. These AAA games, and you're seeing, you know, you've seen over the last few years a lot of AAA publishers move from that. But on the flip side, you have Satya Nadella calling out the fact that Starfield led to the biggest boost, uh, single boost in Game Pass subscriptions. Uh, basically, you had a single player new IP, and I, yes, it's from BGS, or, you know, Monster in terms of name recognition, but it's still a single player uh, new IP basically having the same impact that a gas would have, and maybe even more, because, you know, what happens with subscriptions is these people that get on them um, generally don't ever get off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for the average person just stays on those and you get somebody in today even if they're on the low end at ten dollars a month uh that's going to be something that they that could be revenue for the next five ten twenty years even really and so, they love buying stuff like horse armor and space so yeah, you know what i'm saying right, yeah we haven't even got to the dlc right <laughs> like the dlc we saw like the uh the pre-orders for that thing were through the roof yeah we, ridiculous we, yeah, we haven't even got to the to the things like the DLCs, and I know they're going to have creation clubs, and yeah, they're probably going to have some. They're going to have extra ways to monetize. I'm I'm sure of it. It's just that's just the, the business. But but I, you know what what it kind of says though, and I and I think I think for um, for people that are fans that that grew up like like a lot of us did, uh, we grew up playing the single player games. Uh, yes, yeah, so like multiplayer as well, but. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, I'm a Halo, Halo fanboy. <laughs> I'm on Halo. Nothing wrong with that, dude. I got almost 17 days in Halo Infinite alone. Yeah, and I got a lot more. So it's like, it's ridiculous. But, you know, but we, we grew up on these, like, these big single player games, right? The big zeitgeist moments. That was what we looked forward to a lot of times. Uh, that's what we looked forward to at the E3s. That's what you looked forward to at Christmas, uh, you know, back in the day. Or it, it, it was those big tentpole AAA games. And, I think one of the interesting things, and I haven't really seen this called out like directly, like tied it together, but you know, one of the things I saw, and we heard some of it during the the uh, ABK um, court proceedings, was that uh, they were missing targets, and you know, by all accounts, they were missing gaming targets regularly, including Game Pass, and that's despite them having one of their you know strongest years in terms of like all the diversity of content um and i am somebody that really loves the indies the double a's the diversity that's one that may draw me as much as triple a games really to the service uh, maybe more so but you know something that i you know that I, i've said for a while is that you look at other subscriptions where content is like the thing that the factor that drives people uh you know like it's not like music where everybody's got the same you know songs right it's it's it in if you look at like tv subscriptions it is the stranger things the squid games it is like the mandalorian or uh you know um god you just think of any of any 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 big show game of thrones right like world of warcraft for 25 years <laughs> well That's a like fact. 
<laughs> but but looking at like the big big tent pole uh things that's what drives people in now once they're there then that diversity keeps them hooked right like yeah it's it's the big ten pole it, it is that thing that everybody talks about at the cooler at work that makes me somebody go all right i'll go subscribe and yeah i'll subscribe for a month and check out that show and then they forget they have it like five years later right it's just there um that's the thing that brings people in and that's what netflix has seen if you look at netflix like their growth trajectory it lines up with you know, when they started getting the, the the big shows that were getting the awards, you know, along with all the other big boys that were, you know, not subscriptions, when they started getting that mainstream recognition, that's when they started to blow up. And then when they started to do that, when they started to find the content that was tentpole, you know, zeitgeist uh, content for other countries, that's when they started expanding internationally. And so, you, you know, we've seen month after month where Game Pass was missing out its its goals. Uh, it comes out with a big zeitgeist game. And what happens? It has its biggest moment, right? So what's that telling investors? <laughs> we need more of those. If we want to grow, we're going to need more giant games. It All the con all the, the, the talk about they're just going to do filler and, you know, Microsoft is going to buy these big companies and they're going to cheapen them out. You know, if, if 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 anything, what's happened or the what the data is telling investors at Microsoft is your potential big games go all in on them. You know, if Fable has potential to be a zeitgeist, you delay, you keep that in development as long as it takes. You make that you make that a monster. You do it. You follow the same process. You have everybody at Microsoft test that game out. Um, you know, and same with anything else that's in their pipeline. And I think it's also going to inform. Satya in the other in the the executives now, uh, you know, hey, what other things are out there? Because we know, we know, like like one Starfield um, is probably going to do more for growth than ten really good games that you know. Again, all of us on the panel may really really like, but that's just the way this business works. So um, I think that it is exciting for people that want more of that stuff and want a place for that um to continue to thrive right is those you know those giant the games and especially you were talking about a new ip you know still you know at the end of the day this is a this is a even though bgs is well established this is a brand new ip it does have to you know it's not you know if you think this is big I and mean, wait till elder scrolls comes out again um you know like this is still something that's got to establish itself and uh, so all those send the right signals. I think like for Microsoft and Xbox, you know, anybody who's a Game Pass fan, which I am, I don't, I don't want to apologize for it. No matter how bad you know anybody in the mainstream tries to make people feel about, uh, you know, like hey, you need therapy for your uh, if you're cheering for this consolidation. It's like you know what, my therapy is Game Pass. So uh, as long as Microsoft keeps paying for that with more games, that's good for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, like like. Anybody who's a fan of like Game Pass right now and more of these types of things, uh, all all the all the data is now telling Microsoft to, to go all in with this. So OBM, the only people that are against it, number one, is Sony because they want you to keep on buying their game and grifters. That's it. No one else is against Game Pass, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, I know I know it's and it's, Nintendo yeah. and Nintendo is telling uh Microsoft, crush them, please. Give us payback for 25 years ago. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> But I'll let some other people talk. I've rambled on for a long, long time. So no, no, no. We, we, well, we we appreciate the, the the hot take. Hargeet, first of all, I love the image behind you. It is so. It is PlayStation <laughs> burning? Is that the house of PlayStation burning? It just might be. It's getting Look, hot in here. Yesterday, <laughs> we learned that uh, you know there were some big comments from Amy Hood. There were some obviously some big comments from Satya Nadella, um, and uh, obviously they're 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 gonna double down on investment. I think it's I think it's 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 powerful when the head when the CEO of Microsoft considers cuz you got to remember for quite some time you know they looked at like uh uh Xbox like the little brother like no one uh, he he's not going to amount to anything. It turns out well that's not in fact the case. And it's making a lot of money for them and they have a service that is going to erupt. Now Right now, they're doing, they're, 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 you know, they're making bank with it. There's no doubt about it. They have over 30 million subscribers, but it's there's something to be said 
about when you look at the forecast for both platforms. This is why I say that one is going uh, one direction and the other one is going in another direction. Sony is on on the decline, folks. I, I don't care how many God of Wars or how many Uncharted you throw <laughs> you, you 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 release. They have no direction. They have no leadership. There's no confidence within the turmoil that has that that's being reported on the inside screams that there are major problems no, and you know what's interesting hargi no one's mentioning it you don't see the, you don't see the gaming media out there reporting this you Thank have you. They're, they're not out there reporting this in fact the only reason why i knew um connie was w- w- was fired was because jaffe reported on it two days in a row no one picked up that story. No one said that her entire uh, staff left the job after how she was treated. Th- thanks to um, Post Up, and of course, again, I got to give the credit where the credit is due. We learned that Sean Layden was escorted out of the building by security when he was sent packing. Could you imagine that? Sean Layden, Mr. PlayStation? He probably had to sign a thousand NDAs. That's why we didn't hear from that dude for about a year. Like how yeah. disgusting is that? And 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 this is the company that people are championing. You get out of here. I'm sorry. Let's get back to Microsoft. They woke the sleeping giant. I'm very interested to hear what you have to say about Satya Nadella's double down <laughs> uh, uh, comment on how they're treating gaming moving forward. Godfather yeah, I mean, Satya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look. The, you know, when he came out and said these words, "We're all in on gaming." It was already all, all set. Like when Microsoft says they're going to do something, they have lots of money to make that happen, right? So they will go into it and do it, right? So, uh, you know, when he said that, I knew already that that is going to be the direction. The, the question was, how far are they going to keep going? And look, the money keeps rolling in. And, and you know, Phil has set it up perfectly to say, we're going to buy service games the way they bought Minecraft which is just a money printing machine. They took that from 100 million users. It's up to 300 million sold, right? Like that's phenomenal growth, however you put it, right? But it just keeps printing money for them on the in the background. And then they, they, they took, you know, a chance with Rare and said, let's make Sea of Thieves. Now there's an example of a studio that didn't do live games. But they say, eh, what the heck, let's try it, right? They stumbled, they fumbled. But they got to a point where that game is actually, it's pretty good now. It it has tens of millions of players that have played it. Uh, It consistently keeps drawing in more and and they put in more content. And it, it, you know, it's doing well enough, right? So, uh, so there's another, you know, live game that they have. And now they just bought ABK with some pretty big live games that keep getting massive amounts of users. I mean, they're, they're monthly active users has got to be astronomical at this point. Take Minecraft, take what you get from ABK. Gosh, it's got to be like, what, five, 600 million monthly active users just with those. That is fantastic, ridiculous numbers, right? Well, you know, Satya made mention of it, uh, Hargeet, that they have currently under the Xbox Game Studios umbrella 13 IPs that have made over a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah, that are worth over a billion. Yeah, and, and look, so this, this, so as far as the business model, they did the right things to put themselves in position to be able to make those AAA games, right? Sean isn't wrong. The games have become ridiculous, right? It's six years of development now because people want more and more and more. And I, I have to, I, I always blame Sony for this. It's they're a victim of their own success. Indeed. They created these games that look fantastic, and then that sets the, the minimum bar. And then, well, it's got to be better than what you did last time. Well, that took a lot to get to there. Well, I guess what? You're going to be doing more, and then you're going to be doing more, and then you're going to be doing more. And that's what ends up happening, right? What used to be like an 18-month to two-year cycle became three years, four years, five years, six years, seven now years. Now they're upwards of six, seven years, dude, for these, right? these so, $200 million games. Yeah. Exactly. And it's just, you know, it just takes a long time now, and that is is a long investment that you're not getting any return on so you know publishers have to figure out how to monetize everything else so they can keep paying them in comes this ridiculous thing called game pass which eliminates the entire problem (laughs) you basically have a recurring revenue that pays for your salaries pays for your production and everything you make on top of that is gravy Right. right so you're good and that that's essentially what they've done you've got all these live service games that cover a lot of the costs on top of having 
subscription service that just covers all of your other costs. It's just, it's crazy. So they've done everything to kind of position themselves to be able to give you all those games they announced and the many more we don't know about, AAA single player games, along with all their live service games that just keep going and keep going, right? So they've they've well positioned themselves to do this. The, the, the interesting thing with Sony, right? But like, I don't know if we want to pivot to that or not, but look, Nintendo has an identity and Nintendo puts out their games. I, you know, the next Switch is coming potentially next year. Yep. And I can tell you already, there'll be a Mario game. Yeah, at launch, there's going to be game. a 3D Mario game. Yeah, I, right. I, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. They, we know there'll be a Mario Kart. They will have and Pokemon, and, and they will make, sell tens of millions of copies of those games, right? A high, and, the highest one-to-one sales <laughs> currently in gaming are Nintendo console yeah. sales exactly. versus their 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 first party games. They live and on they, a different they, planet right now. They right, and, and they don't even touch PC. You forgot they Labo 2.0. Labo 2.0, right? Hard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it sells, they'll do it, right? But it doesn't matter. And look, the funny thing is, even with that, they still try quirky things like that. They'll they'll try those kind of things, right? If it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't. Fine. Right? But they'll try those kind of quirky things. They'll try quirky games. But they still have their big games that come in, draw, you know, give you all the money, and they just keep going. And they, like, double the profit of both of their competitors, right? So <clears throat> they're doing great. They're going to come in with the next, you know, console that will potentially be able to play all, if you know, some, if not all, of the, the uh, third-party games, right? So now you have a three-console uh, race. Where does that leave Sony? Their, their games right now, right? According to all the stuff we're hearing, they've told, and I was hinting that this is a thing. I keep hearing these rumors that they're telling all their studios, you're going to make live games. They're going to be games as a service games. And I don't like this plan, but that's what they, you know, they, they went down that path. What are those games going to be? When are they going to come out? Will they actually be good? Like we, you know, we haven't seen too many single player, you know, studios, come up with good live service games. It's hard to do. It's hard to make a live service game, period. But it's really hard to do when your mindset is, I make a single player game. I make a cinematic adventure game. Well, okay, what is their their roadmap, right? And are people going to want to be on PlayStation? This is going to be a headache. Look, they're they're cleaning house. It's obvious now, right? The, the, the news that we're getting, they're cleaning house, right? I wouldn't be surprised if Herman Holtz is next. I mean, I like they're cleaning house, right? So the changes are coming they're recognizing their problems something's going to change there we'll see if it gets better but the next couple of years is there any reason to be on playstation do you think hell divers is going to be a console selling game maybe but it's on pc rd like, but hold on let me interject real fast because i want to piggyback on something you said that caught my attention okay I understand that they brought in Bungie for their expertise when it comes to the live service multiplayer aspect of it. But yeah. from from day one, and Boom knows this because I was on a show because I was one of the first that said this. How how do you allow Bungie to come in and tell Naughty Dog your game's not good enough when Naughty Dog has basically been carrying PlayStation on their backs? Okay, and now you're gonna have people say, "Oh, but Bungie, they're the ones that are the experts in the live service games, and they ha- and they bought them for their expertise." <laughs> it no, dude. I hope you know that I guarantee you money <laughs> that that Bungie that um Naughty Dog's game Factions Two would have been a unique game within the space of live service games. Because that's the thing. You need something different to really stand out. And yeah. they basically came in and they said, hey, your game is shit. Go back to the drawing board. So yep. that's on Jim. And that's on yep. Herman Holst. Yep. And and, and, and and you could tell that the studios internally, that, 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 that to me really drew a wedge between them because... They, they came in there and they basically said, hey, all, all the games that you guys have made for us, that's not what we want. It, 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 you guys know, don't we know how to make live game. service games, and that's what we want. Yeah. Uh, you know, what What happens if that's Sucker Punch or Insomniac? Like, uh, Insomniac is owning this generation for PlayStation, right? Let's Indeed. Just be clear. They, they, they literally <laughs> are. They're, they're basically <laughs> they're the PlayStation. It. Yeah. Um, so what if, like, they told, you know, Insomniac, hey, Wolverine needs to be a live game. I don't know what that even looks like, but okay, what it is, right? Let's say it is, and there's a clash there as well, right? So Bungie's going in and saying, yeah, I, I don't think so, right? That's probably where they are, right? There's this strife. That's what we're hearing, right? This strife across the studios about this move to gas, yes. and they didn't like it. Um, but they look, also, I, you know yeah. what, you know, Hargeet, you know what also was mentioned? I don't know if you saw this. Did you watch the David uh, Jaffe video? 
I did. I did. Okay. Yeah. He remember he says that the 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 <laughs> internal teams, the first party teams, really did not like the fact that um, Bungie, a, a newly acquired studio, thank told, you, told, told Naughty Dog OG. to f off. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 And and slightly, you know, a couple of days later or whatever, one of the heads of Naughty Dog left. Right. I mean, he left. And, and this he, is this is what I'm afraid founders. of. Founders this is what company. I'm afraid of. If yeah. you push people to do that kind of thing, the talent that makes those games will leave. So we won't get a Ghost of Tsushima 2 if they keep up with this, right? And obviously management figured this out and they said, oh, yo, whoa, whoa, we got to slow down and figure out how to fix this, right? And I hope that that doesn't happen and we do get those quality games from, from uh, PlayStation, right? But this is the transition now. What happens? For the last few years, they've been told you're going to make a live service game. Does that mean they're going to scrap what they're doing and start again? What does 24 and 25 look like? Right, 24, we're going to get a Switch 2 or Pro or whatever. It's right. going to come out. It's going to sell gangbusters. That's just a fact. It is what it is, right? It's going to sell gangbusters. It's going to have a Mario 3D. It's yep. That's also going to sell gangbusters. There's going to be a lot of enthusiasm for a brand new console. It's going to come out. Now, supposedly, there is a Pro PS5 coming next year. Supposedly, yeah. right? Holiday, supposedly, yeah. I'm what is the marquee game it. for that? I, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, if I were as a betting man, I'm going to guess that's going to not come out, but we'll it's their problem because <laughs> they keep, they still keep thinking hardware, hardware, idiots, and it's software. software, software, it's software. That's and Microsoft learned that lesson, from. right? Well, well, Microsoft's always known that lesson, right? Because if you right. ever look back in their history, like, what are we? We are a software company, right? We're not going to be hard. We're a software company. That's what we're going to do our innovation. It's software, right? So they just went back to their roots and said, yeah, we just need to sell games. I don't care if Call of Duty is on PlayStation. I'm making money. That's what I need to do. So they're going to just do that, right? Fair enough. Minecraft is everywhere. Good. It makes money. <laughs> just keep printing that money, right? So from a, a financial perspective, from making money, uh, certainly Microsoft has put themselves in a position, especially with ABK, to potentially be the leader. Maybe Tencent stays there, right? Because Tencent makes a lot based on their investments everywhere, right? But maybe, you know, they're, they're in that range now to out do sony and that can happen because again sony needs to sell games to make money and what do they have in the pipeline right now maybe they surprise us and there's a whole bunch of stuff we just don't know about and it'll all be single player and it'll be all be great but between the identities of these xbox is clear they're like we want to make money we will be anywhere and everywhere you can be on mobile we can be you can be on pc cloud console we got a console for you no problem we don't care where you play go play right subscribe to game pass if you want to buy it that way if not go buy the game outright we're happy go buy it on steam we're good doesn't matter to us go play right we just want you to be a customer right and their game like library is insane at this point right they have every type of game we want an rts we got you fps we got you third person we got you you know adventure game we got you right R rpgs we got you right it just goes on and on and on right so they have almost everything covered there's just jrpgs and a few other little categories maybe fighting games that you could say they got a little bit of miss compare that to sony what do they have what do they have like and, and nintendo by the way covers almost all of that too Right, they they've got almost all of that as well, right? Whether it's uh, third party deals that they have with Xenoblade Chronicles or their own internal Splatoon or you know Zelda or Mario, they've got a lot of massive IPs, right? And they can sustain themselves, and we've seen that with their recent uh, financials. Eighty percent of their uh, game revenue comes from their own first party stuff, right? Perfectly fine. They sustain themselves and they make massive amounts of money, so they're happy. Right, so you can see where that's going to go. It's very likely going to sell well if the third parties all say we're going to go there because what that maybe Switch Two sells another hundred million, you know, uh, consoles. Why wouldn't you go there? So they're going to put their stuff there. What is Sony's pitch that it's a little bit higher res than a, a Nintendo? Well, there's a Series X that's a little higher res than a PlayStation. That doesn't seem to matter. People bought the Series S more than they bought the Series X. Because really, all they want is a place to play. If right. you really they care want... about resolution and frames, you own there's, a PC. A, there's a system for you. It's called PC. Yeah, yeah so exactly. go to the PC, tinker all you want, get the highest end cards, whatever you want to do, right? You can do whatever you want there. But if you just want to play, it's going to be a, a contest between the Series S, the lower tier, and the Switch. Because why, why does anybody care beyond that, right? If you want beyond that, you're going to be a hardcore gamer. Fine, you got the Series X if you want it. Sure, go get the PS5 if you want it, or get a PC. 
I'm finding more and more people in the the you know Xbox community are waking up to the idea of well I can have a PC and an Xbox, so <laughs> they actually do complement each other kind of nicely. I they do, remember. and you can flip back and forth. I can, like, I Xbox can bring an Xbox so to yeah. I can you can put an Xbox in one room and and uh, take it with you when you go on yep. a trip, and and you got the you got the. And when you want to play everything on the PC, all your saves are there, and and yep. everything on Game Pass is there. Yep. And it, it, cross is it everything, cross buy, cross uh, you know so, uh, progression. They're doing so all I, that. So what I think is kind of interesting is you're talking about it because I like and Hargy, I think you and me like disagree on a couple uh, on some things that we talked about before. Where you know I I don't think like Microsoft's going to necessarily convert PlayStation gamers or make them you know like like Phil is saying like I. They're not going to sell their their PlayStations, even if Correct. they go on a two year drought. Yeah, like like it's you know like they're going to keep that stuff. Uh, people are very ecosystem loyal, but the thing that that the opportunity here, and I think the way things align up is that you know a lot of this business, and I always keep I always use the word mind share to talk about it because it, that is this business these days. It is yep. what it, you know it is what people are talking about. It is what they're sharing on social media. How did a game like High in Life, which basically got what <laughs> 50s and Metacritic, double uh, A new IP gets uh, you know gets seven million users is because it blew up on social media on TikTok. Um, yep. That that is the new ball game, and you know for like Sony's going to continue to keep their base. Their floor is very high, but I, I think on the flip side of that, the reason why you you can bring that up in in relation to some of these things is that there could be potential. For you know, for gaps in terms of of you know Sony filling that mind share, if they don't have their big ten pole, if they don't have a Spider Man equivalent next year or something like that, that you know that that all of a sudden this platform between all its users on the PC side, right? Uh, it's not just the console anymore; it's it's the wherever it's on your ROG ally. It's you know be, between all those things, uh, there could be some openings for somebody like Microsoft to gain more attention and maybe uh, it gets somebody to say, well, Hey, you know what? I, I got a PlayStation. Maybe I'll just add this console. Now in the past, adding a console, the secondary console is not a very profitable one for those corporations. Like if you go out and you buy a PlayStation or an Xbox as a secondary console and you only buy the exclusives for it, you only maybe buy a game a year. Um, it is not profitable because especially for Microsoft, I could say like, you know, you, you, you're buying those at a loss. Uh, one of the reasons why I think they've, they slowed down some, they slowed down some uh, supply this year. Um, they're sold at a loss, right? So take, so in order for you to be profitable, you got to be like really the, like really engaged on that platform for that to end up working out for them. Now they got an equalizer and it's the game pass thing. And I think yep. that changes the entire equation. So whereas in the past, you know, you go buy a console, it's your secondary console. You go buy a bunch of used games you, you missed over the last few years for like 20 bucks a piece, right? You fill up your library for a hundred bucks. Maybe you buy another exclusive here or there uh, day one. That's how, if you, it doesn't matter if you're in the media or if you're just an average Joe gamer, you always hear people say, Oh, my other console always collects dust, you know, and, and, and I believe them because most people play third parties and then, and then, uh, and then even on first party, they, they're going to lean towards the one that's their primary ecosystem. But game pass is a little bit different and it just begs people to just try stuff. So for 10 bucks, you're trying stuff. And now suddenly you're locked in the ecosystem. And suddenly now, if you forget about it, it's mm -hmm. uh you are you are basically spending as much money as a as an average cons as an average gamer who's that who's a primary user because of that. Because that's how the whole game pass uh model works. It basically averages out to the the amount of money that a typical consumer spends a year on traditional releases. So if so you did normies, buy, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So for the normies, it's like the you're you're basically getting, uh, you know, you're getting a a decent return, right, over the course of years. Yeah. So uh, so it does it it does open up some so, some opportunities but, but here. I'm not looking at Xbox replacing PlayStation. No, I'm saying I, I, Nintendo yeah. has the opportunity to do that because yep. if Nintendo can play everything then it suddenly becomes a viable alternative. It will be cheaper and it will have the ability to play everything and it will play their own first party catalog. Look, and the only on thing the that go. keeps you on PlayStation would be the PlayStation exclusives. So if PlayStation doesn't have anything, then what's the point of the PlayStation? Uh, That's going to be the problem they have to play through. Did, right? Did you... So 
Yeah, in the digital age, I'll just say like one thing on that. Like in the digital age, I don't think people they stay they stay system system loyal. I you know talk to a developer. Uh, ah, like system EA. loyal, please. Or like, it, it's gonna it, be I, like eco, I, ecosystem. Ten percent of the community could care about that, right? Because how many people have the game libraries that we have? Not a lot, okay. I can't, Most I can't of the begin people... to tell you that every time I've gone into GameStop, you have people trading in entire systems to get moved to another one. The normie yeah. community could care less, honestly. They don't I care. Know that there's a they don't I think, they... I think digital changes things. Like, I so I talked to a developer that uh, you know, was with EA and said EA found that found out that even it didn't matter, like, it didn't matter that their ecosystem was available on the same damn you know, hardware. <laughs> Uh, people people will switch they'll switch games before they switch ecosystems in the digital age like when people get used to the their achievements their whatever whatever just like their gaming libraries <laughs> and stuff like that like they 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 do get loyal to that stuff but I do like I said I, I do think that something like a subscription probably has a different uh, paradigm to it uh because you don't have to buy in completely to an ecosystem yep. to now to become a normal customer yep absolutely I, I, I won't agree with the nintendo one though <laughs> why no, what mean, is listen, it about it's... nintendo that pushes you away no no <laughs> i don't have anything against nintendo i just i know i i have a nintendo i just bought the mario game man uh right. <laughs> well but... obm obm and hargy the, the thing is is that where playstation is right now october 25th 2023 not as bad, not as severe as where Xbox was in 2017 and the years prior, where right. people were le legitimately asking themselves, where are the damn games? Because mm, yeah. that's the problem that they that they have here. Now, lucky for them, they have such they gained such a large lead in the PS4 generation that they've given themselves cushion to kind of, I guess, navigate through these waters. And when I get to my turn, I'll I'll talk a little bit well, no, about I, that. You know what? Let, let, let's bring you in real quick because okay. I want I want to bring I want to read a, a comment from Satya. Who he had this to say, John. He says the way games are made, the way games are delivered, is changing radically. Whether it's mobile or consoles or PC or even cloud. So we're looking forward to really doubling down both as a game producer and a publisher. There uh, and they will continue building the our gaming platform. I mean, like when you hear that, and you, and like I said, folks, everything ha you know, you, you just have to look at circumstance, John. Microsoft, and we're going to get to the se second half of the show. It's going to happen yesterday with all those smiles and all those hugs and all those pictures that Phil was taking with his tongue out. And Sarah hanging out with uh, with Lulu and everybody. Everybody was having a really chill, relaxed time at Blizzard, welcoming in the new owner. And Mike and and on the same day, we're getting reports that literally Sony is burning from within the ins from within. And now you turn around, John, and you look at this and you say, "Okay, wait a second. Sony's burning. They're burning right now. Listen, you can say whatever you want about Spider Man. Okay, it's a good game." But the bug stuff, bro, like that is serious. And I, every time I get into a groove, I my system locks up. I got to report a bug. I get I, it, it is to the point where it, it, I'm starting to get the Jedi feeling now. Because when I kept losing save after save, after an hour, an hour of play, I said, you know what? They're not respecting my time. So let me I'm give you some keep... advice. Yeah, let me yeah. give you some advice that that I that I did. As soon as I saw those bugs and like everybody, and I saw that it was not an exaggerated thing, I literally said to myself, "Look, I have it downloaded. I'm gonna wait for them to release a patch because I don't want okay. my experience to be ruined." You know what I mean? And I was really excited for Spider Man Two. Boom! You, you know I you know I have freaking Venom tattooed on my bicep, so I, I was do. super excited for Spider Man Two. So I want to play it in the best possible way, right? So I'm gonna wait for patches and stuff like you're that. You're not wrong. But, I mean, there's a lot to play, so you're not wrong about that but you so, know what I, I, enough of spider-man john i gotta hear from you brother you're a money guy you understand the business one company is in turmoil the other one is celebrating a 70 billion dollar deal where the board is now asking who's next i think sony's in trouble bro look I'm gonna be I'm gonna be messy, okay, and then I'll and then I'll get serious. Be messy as you want. I, I, I'll get I, the broom. It's okay. I, I'm gonna get messy, and then and then I'll get to to the serious chatter. 
you, this is the ass whooping that PlayStation has had coming a long time that they that they honestly deserve for not preparing, okay, and for thinking that they're going to be sitting on top of the mountain forever. All right, and that goes for any company that that wants to just cruise control themselves, you know, for 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 eternity. It doesn't work that way. That's why people like me, we were championing this acquisition because we wanted the competition to be fierce between all these companies because uh, as gamers, we win at the end of the day, Indeed. right? Yeah. So that the only people that benefit is us as gamers when they're neck and neck right there at each other's neck. But guess what, boom? Xbox trained for the fight and PlayStation apparently was eating donuts in the back, okay? Because uh, guys, now, now the Xbox gamers are saying, where's our competition? Okay, why don't you guys, are you guys going to show up to the fight or what? And you're going to have people, oh, but John, Spider-Man 2 just released 2.5 million copies. Hey, that's a hell of, a, a, of an accomplishment. But in this business, it's what have you done for me lately, right? So what comes out next month? What comes out the month after? Because games got to keep on coming out. You can't just release one game for the whole year and expect for your fan base to be satisfied and, ex and expect to keep on selling consoles at the volume that they're selling. Something eventually has to give here. OK, so Xbox, they went all of 2022 without releasing one first party game except for Pentiment. Props to Pentiment. No, not hating on it, but it's not really a, a system seller. And we saw that Game Pass, the growth, it hurt the growth of Game Pass. So you got to release the freaking games. That's why Nintendo, to Hargeet's credit, has been the only company from the big three that has hit on all strides. For years and years and years. Props to them. Kudos to them. They figured it out. Okay. On selling the abacus to people it's since 2013 for the full price. They figured it out. Something that works for them, right? Now coming into the new generation, they need to figure it out again because they better not have a Wii U situation. All right. They better, they better not pull uh, 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 all of a sudden that the that the switch to you you need like a weird power adapter attached to it or something like that. All right, for it to work. So we need them to 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 honestly knock it out of the park, and and by by all means they're gonna do that, right? PlayStation. Now back to PlayStation and, and your question, boom. Two CEOs come to mind that I believe are gonna take over PlayStation. Okay, come March time, Jim, he got fired. Get your ass out of here. They told him, Jim, not only did you not deliver on your promises of gas games, you told us that gas games were needed. You put out of 10 studios, you want four, six of our 10 games to be gas games and everybody's behind. And you just canceled factions. That was probably the one that was that was the furthest ahead. So Jim and, and the other person that was working there, um, unfortunately, they paid the price. On top of that, Jim spilled the beans on everything, on all the dirty shenanigans that, that Sony was pulling in the industry. He, he, he revealed it to the world and to regulators, more importantly. So without a doubt in my mind, they got they got his ass out of there. All right. Now, the two CEOs that I think that are going to take over for, for PlayStation are actually going to be either Andrew Wilson of EA or Strauss Zelnick. And the reason I say that is because if 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 Sony wants to be able to survive the long haul here and keep up with the behemoth that is Xbox, they really, really need to hit on all cylinders and those two CEOs have proven that they have figured out the live service methods and they have and they have proven that that they can make money off their games okay off live service that's what those are the two predictions that I have for for Sony for PlayStation's new CEO come come March time now another thing you better get someone that is good in the mobile space that has experience in that space as well, because they're going to need that mobile money also if the ponies want to keep on getting those, you know, over the shoulder, sad dad simulators, and you want them to come out more than one time every one or two years, you better hope that they're making money off these live service games in order to fund them. So you guys better support those live service games or else it's going to look real, real bad. Okay. Now with, with Xbox boom, what, let me tell you something. This is this is where I think that Jim Ryan messed up the most out of everything. This is what he messed up most with. Instead of playing nice with Xbox Boom, I think that he pissed them off. And let me tell you something. 
by by Satya saying that we're doubling down on gaming, they're going to squeeze you like a freaking python. They're just going to suck the life out of you, and they're doing it little by little. They don't have to hold back anymore because they don't have to seem weak to regulators. So they don't they don't have to come in with a neck brace now, you know, whenever, oh, let's talk about Xbox, we're last in, you know, in console. They're not going to be like that no more because they don't they don't have to play, you know, chump anymore. They're you're gonna you've seen marketing now, like 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 even before the marketing the, in the last week has been nothing short of the dude. most I've ever seen, dude. Like it has been on a level, it's been on a PlayStation level, and I mean that. With absolute respect, because you know, obviously, PlayStation has god tier marketing, and what they've been up to, Microsoft specifically, what they've been doing with the Spear in, in Las Vegas, is just it's just crazy. Yeah, and and let me tell you, the marketing's on point right now. The games are coming. Okay, the E3 that they had this year was phenomenal. They yeah. just closed Activision Blizzard, which starting next year, we're gonna get all of their games on Game Pass. Guys, it is looking really good on the Xbox side right now. And if yeah. you're a gamer, once this news really starts spreading out to the casuals, that's when you're going to see the big boom that that no pun intended boom that you keep <laughs> on saying, you know, with the with the Series S in combination with Call of Duty. Call of Duty is the casual Trojan horse. That is that is why PlayStation fought so hard to keep that title because they know that the, the game just attracts the masses. Okay. People just love it. It, it. it attracts them in droves. All right. And then Xbox said, listen, for everybody that already has a PlayStation and that's your preferred ecosystem, like OBM is saying, we don't give a rat's ass. Buy it there. You're get, you're going to give us 70 bucks. That's okay with us too. So they figured out a way to even monetize a PlayStation gamer. All right. Genius. Just genius when you really think about it. So the last thing I'll say, boom, so that uh, Sir X-Men, you can get your bars in, is this is, I, I really need PlayStation to get their stuff together and compete because now we as Xbox gamers are going to start pushing back. That's why the J-Rocks of the world are out there. I'm out there. Hey, you guys were throwing blows for years and years and years, being petty, making fun of Xbox. Xbox gamers, oh, dude, you game on Xbox and the shit box on this and that. It's our time, baby. Are you going to show up? Are you going to show up to the fight or not? Uh, dude, I, I don't know if they're limping in or they're just going to just gonna take the L and not show up. But all I know is that they're in, they're, unfortunately, they're in turmoil. They're, they're, they're leaderless, right? Right now, the, the, the call of anything that's being done for PlayStation is coming from PlayStation proper, not SIE. You know, like I said, a couple of days ago, even before, you know, right after the Jaffe uh, announcement, there was some talk around the... Now, again, I, I don't have this as a rumor or anything, but normally uh, Shuhei Yoshida is out there tweeting, right? You usually see him out there. He's one of the few people that actually interacts with the PlayStation community, and he hasn't really done that. So there was some talk, and again, I, you know, just different people I, sp I spoke to that they were concerned that he might be next. And Herman Holtz, I mean, you don't know. I mean, we, we learned today, Jaffe said it, that he wanted uh, to get rid of all of the Japanese studio connections to PlayStation. And I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, I, definitely don't dis I definitely disagree with that. And if in fact that's the case, and Japan gets a hold of that, maybe they they, they move uh, they move SIE back to Japan because they don't like what's happening here. We, listen, it's it's going to be very very telling in the next couple of weeks of what happens with Sony. But Sir X Men, let's bring you in on this, and and and, and let's specifically point to how dedicated Satya Nadella and 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 Microsoft seem to be with Xbox. Because you obviously get, it makes money. You want to get to your super chats before I get going? Because it's going. No, no, be no. Hot. Please, I, I'll catch them. I, I'll get. I get every one of the super chats before we get to the, uh, the second topic of the show. All right, chat, and everybody on the panel. I hope you're ready for this. I'm not going to say what I normally been saying for two years about this situation, but Screw Games is a service for Sony. You need to more concentrate on multiplayer games for your system first before you even think about going to games as a service. Your multiplayer is nil. A lot of your developers 
like people that make the SOCOM, like people with resistance fall a man, have yeah. been asking you for years to let us develop the games for us. But they kept telling them, no, 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 we're going to stay with our single player. We're going to stay with our single player. So you're getting the people that made your multiplayers to make your games that you know are thriving. What is games as a service, really, everybody? It's multiplayer. Multipl games as a service was born out of multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Technically, that's what these games are now. They just have evolved over the years. You know, thanks to Microsoft back in the day with the innovation of Xbox Live, that's how we got to this point to this day for consoles. PC has always had it. But that's where the innovation came from. And all Sony's been doing is cutting and paste, cutting and paste, and putting it to theirs when they saw it was hot. But this time they waited so long while this was going on to get hot. So you want to go to a games as a service when you haven't even invested in your multiplayer games over this course of the year when games as a service was starting to grow. You brought this upon yourself for procrastinating. And now you want to jump in this arena way late to the games. And you say you got four to five years to develop these games, that's going to put you like, what, 10 years, by, 10, 11 years behind the curve to where people are right now. Every Microsoft game that has been developed over the past 10 years, people still play those multiplayer games. Microsoft is still making money from multiplayer games that are 10 years old. They're still playing the old Gears. They're still playing the old Halos. They're still playing all of those games. They're still making money of those games. And when they started to innovate to put those games on PC also over through the Game Pass, through the Windows Live, that innovation is making them more money. Sony still wants to keep them games on their specific console. If you had released those games on PC day one, you would have had a steady flow of revenue, even though they would have been single player. You would have had that day one. You blew it when you didn't put your um your your, your Google eyeball stuff on on place on PC day one. And they were asking you for that. They would have paid for that, but that's revenue you lost. People were asking you for Gran Turismo to be on PC day one. No, you wanted to keep it just on your console. And now you're to the point where Spider-Man 2 came out and you just wanted to be on PlayStation 5 when you got all those other people that still have PlayStation 4 and don't tell me that game couldn't have ran on a PlayStation 4 because it's it not that much of a variance to where you're at now you're still trying to base your world on everything on console okay we got the new console we got to put everything on the new console it ain't working like that for you it's been seven years and people been telling you we want it on pc also day one now you left all those hundred and something million people that still just have ps4 because there's they they are not seeing any game and I'm sorry, worthy to jump to a PS5 right now. So, okay, you're selling this, but your console has been out for, what, four four years, right, the PS5? No, no, th th I think this would be the third year, right? When this, this came in 2020. 2020 okay. came out. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Boom, for the correction. Yeah. But your game's been out that long. I know we had a crisis with consoles back then, but now you got consoles in the system where people can buy but Microsoft's hitting on all cylinders now when you started to get your consoles out there. So now people seeing these games in 2023 and they're swinging over and now they're hearing about the deal with Game Pass and now you jumped up your price for your service. Yeah, 40 bucks. When people, yep, when people see, oh, $17 and I get all this, 
And day one. And day, day, day. And day one, people are paying for the day. People are also paying paying for the early with the other 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 things that you get. So they're making money. They're making money on Steam. They're making money everywhere they put their games out. But yet you still want to lock all your games to this one console and come out years later for PC. People are like, I waited this long. I can wait later and wait for a deal on it. And it's not you that old. money day one. And Sir X-Men, the thing is, is that even though I know that Spider-Man and God of War sold pretty well on the PC. That oh, was yeah, I got Spider-Man on PC. It's wonderful. No, yeah, but the reason I, I still hold firm and I believe that the reason that those two particular games sold as high as they did was because people were excited that that was the first time ever that those franchises were proper were coming over to PC, right? So Correct. now when, when Spider-Man 2 launches, the hype is not going to be as much as the first Spider-Man. God of War Ragnarok, the hype is not going to be there like it was for the first one because that was the first time that this type of title was coming to PC, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, they never I, had a Spider-Man on PC ever. It's always so, been console. So so I think that, you know, and this is a, a, a discussion that we've had within the community where the PlayStation guys will hold firm. Oh, what's the, well, I want my consoles to stay exclusive because they can fully optimize the system. All the narratives, all the BS that you can act, that you can all add to wiki hooves because that's what means. Well, then and I guess you want to make your console die because it has changed. The gaming realm has changed. It's playing your game anywhere you want to play it. That is your problem over there. If you want your console, the PlayStation, to survive, they have to either change, move, or get out of the way. Because yeah, the well. storm is coming. And Satya said, <laughs> we're not playing. And Sat Satya still gets advice from Bill. Don't, don't think he don't. Wow. And let me tell you something. And boom, that thing, boom. Oh, PlayStation probably. is lucky that they fired Jim's ass because I'm telling you right now that Phil and Satya were going to be petty like never before if they would have kept that Joker around. I'm telling you. I, I yes. still think I, 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 the, the pettiness is going to come the way of what, what it's, it's, and that's the thing. You know, you can call it petty, you can call it, you know, taking your pound of flesh, whatever, whatever analogy you want to use. The truth of the matter is, is that this. Gaming is big business. Yep. And and so Satya Nadala is <laughs> is 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 looking to make money for his investors. And right now, gaming is one of the highest. I mean, gaming makes more money than music. It makes movies more. Too. Uh, it's been than, doing than, that. Than, than yeah. movies. So it's 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 big business they want to invest in. And like I said, getting getting ABK across the finish line. I'm going to get to ABK what happened yesterday because we have a lot of quotes from. Oh yeah, I, I got Mara. more, but we'll wait later for that. But I just, yeah, we'll uh, we'll come let back. Let me we'll wrap. Back to you, let brother. me wrap up just a quick second. Just a quick sure, second sure. on that. You know me. I don't. I don't usually take that long. <laughs> but either you really get yourself together, moving fast, Sony. Stop thinking like the past. You're getting rid of your <laughs> people. You're firing your people that wanted you to do. What I was saying about multiplayer and innovations in game, but now you're firing them. What sense does that make? That doesn't make. You need to just gamer. making it. They're just you know, when you when, when they have this kind of disarray, you just you, you try to circle the wagons. I don't think that's going to be enough. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't know what's going to so happen. Either. They're not going out. They're not going out of business, folks. No one's suggesting no. that at all. They're Sony, no. and they're and, and and PlayStation is a worldwide brand. It's number seven. Uh, in, the, in the entire planet. And I don't want them to go nowhere. But <laughs> for years, I've been saying they need to do better. I'm not going to say what I always call it. Not for according to their years. fans, Sir X, man. They're, sir, oh, they're, 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 their fans say they're doing just fine. They want to, and they want to charge them more. So You know what their well, fans when, are also saying, oh, guys? I mean, real, real quick. When you lose your casuals, you lose your market. Yeah, and they're going to lose their casuals. It's your heart. It's your heart comes to Game Pass next year. It's Pass over. Nintendo, the Doomsday, right? Yeah, <laughs> and boom. Okay. You, know, you know what Go else ahead, the hoof? You know what? You, you, so, <laughs> you know what else the hoof brothers and sisters say? They say that that why why do we care about executives so much? That's that's what, oh who cares about executives? Oh, you but better they care start about the console sales numbers. That that's very important. right, right. So <laughs> so so here's the thing, right? If they don't care about executives, why do they care so much about Phil then? Why why do they talk about Phil every day? I okay, know. I gotta say and real quick. Back in the day. Console sales meant something. I'm going to use a swear word, bro. And please forgive me. But in this day and age, console sales don't mean shit. It's, it's how it's much software engagement. you, so, money engagement. you yeah. make. So, so coming thing. back to okay, like the, the, uh, 
you know, the, the business part of it, why Satya is so invested in this, right? It, you're looking at the Microsoft basic like core areas. Uh, mm -hmm. Windows is kind of stabilized, right? Because there's, you know, PC sales are not like making massive strides going up. It's it's kind of where it is. It kind of goes down. Sometimes it comes back a little up and then, but it stays kind of where it is. So that's not an area of growth. It's just an area of sustainment, right? You look at something like Office 365, cool. It kind of grows based on subscription changes if you have mm -hmm. new features, but also that's kind of where it is. And it's, again, it's a great service that a lot of people subscribe to. They make lots of money. Cool. But it's not an avenue of growth. Look, a company that has trillions of investment, that's what that is, people investing in that company. They want a return, right? So what are the areas they're looking at, at getting a return? AI, right? That's one of them. And that's looking to get somewhere where it's going to start giving a return, yep. right? Gaming, because that has an opportunity for Microsoft to grow quite a bit, right? So that's another vector they can have, right? So you know, when you're looking at things like where do they put investment, that's why they're doing that. The third big one, of course, is cloud, right? And they continue to invest in Azure as a cloud, you know, offering for people, right? Platform or or uh, you know, cloud servers works great on PC. Oh my God, right. does it work so good? So, and I'm not talking about cloud gaming. I'm talking about cloud in general, right? The entire Azure environment that makes, mm -hmm. you know, that's growing at double digits, right? So they're getting a return on investment from that, right? So those are the big areas they're betting on, right? And then it's working, right? So that's why gaming is so important, right? So why is, uh, you know, gaming now going to be making more than Windows? Because, well, it's a huge market that they left untapped, yep. right? They, you know, Satya admitted that he should never have gotten out of mobile, right? The, 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 the yeah, he said phone. that the biggest, the hardest thing he had to do was kill the Windows phone. He shouldn't phone. have done that, right? Bring yeah. back that's my a, Windows a phone. I love Windows phone. I know, please, right? Satya, he should have, <laughs> he should have said Zoom. He should have said Zoom also. I, I know, love that I thing. I liked my Zoom too. But uh, <laughs> either way. So. box right here. <laughs> I, it, but that's why the, the, the gaming is such a big deal, right? They, you know. Because they, they have a small percent of a very large pie, they can say, hey, we can grow this market and we can also take percentage shares from other people. We have an opportunity to grow here, right? So we can take our investment and put it here and actually grow it. That's why you spend $100 billion or, or yeah. whatever the number is, because that's people's investment money that they want to give back, right? The investors want to return. And something like ABK is just literally printing money. They're printing money. They make billions in profit. Right, it, you know, in this last quarter, Xbox was profitable, and it has been, and despite all the the claims otherwise, Xbox is profitable. They made 22, 23 billion in profit in the quarter. Microsoft, not yeah. Xbox, but Microsoft, right? As a, and, as a company, yeah. As a company, and and next quarter for for Xbox is going to be fantastic. Why? They now own ABK. ABK. <laughs> all that king revenue that's coming to Xbox's coffers. All that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 sales come into Microsoft. Every conference. time that your favorite zone. every time that your favorite PlayStation <laughs> fanboy buys a skin, just remember <laughs> what hey, you're hey, you know, hey, World of hey, Warcraft uh, and all that point, stuff, right? Hargy, on your point, Hargy, <laughs> um Microsoft did not pay for the ABK. Xbox money paid for the ABK. And they had 90 million dollars to spend 90 90 billion dollars to spare after that all from xbox money not from i don't microsoft. know if it's xbox money but it's yeah, microsoft I, I think it's more, of a, more of a company thing yeah, yeah. which is fine yeah. I, I don't know yeah. if it was them having that much but either way it doesn't microsoft has so much it doesn't matter right this is yeah, all right. cash it's, deals it's, it's so they cash. have so much it's, it's ridiculous but either way that's why they're doing this right then and, and that's why they're going to continue right as long as they don't uh, approach a level where they're too big Right. And that's where regulators will come in and say, eh, no. Right. Uh, as long as that doesn't happen, they're going to keep continuing because what they want is continuous revenue. Right. And that's why Game Pass is so important to them is because it's continuous revenue. Almost all of the things they look for that. How do I keep that monthly occurring revenue to just keep coming? Right. Uh, not just a one time sale. And then 10 years later, I talk to you again. They want that monthly recurring uh, revenue. Yep. Right. And well, Game Pass it, is a and fantastic that, and, vehicle for that. And, and some of you guys said it, uh, you know, but. I guess the thing that I would emphasize and, and probably getting close to having to go here shortly, but um, w one of the things that I would emphasize is, you know, cause there's a lot of talk about, you know, Sony versus Xbox, the console thing or, or the platform thing. I think a lot of this is just really Microsoft. It, it, 
I look at uh, the console war as like a side mission. It's not that it doesn't matter or doesn't have any 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 relevance. It does. It's still the biggest area. It's still the biggest area for Game Pass growth right now, right? Uh, it's still well. That, no, not I think growth, it's PC. But, PC but, growth. For Game, Pass. Or Game Pass customers, I'm sorry. Uh, like in terms of absolute customers, right? That's where you're getting all your enthusiasts from over the years uh, in, in the people that are sharing out the most <laughs> clips, talking about the services the most and things like that. But I, I think the console wars as uh, as we knew them are, I mean, we've mentioned it before, but I, they are, uh, we've the, the financials from this quarter more than any really highlight the irrelevance of of that. You know, for the entire 100%. year we we heard about like, well, where, where's the console sales? What's going on with them? And then we come to find out. I I believe over the past you know the the past year uh, since Mike since Microsoft and all of big tech started cutting costs, uh, I think they held back on supply because. When they put those when they put those consoles out in uh, sell you a console initially, it's they're losing money, right? To 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 create those things, uh, to stock those things, to ship those things, and it's the actually, acquisition OBM. Don't forget that they needed to look as weak as possible. Call it conspiracy, yeah. call it whatever you want. They can't look strong. I think they maybe it's it might have been convenient timing, but at the end of the day, I think that the biggest driver of that was. Them needing to control costs, needing to uh, make sure they're increasing profits, uh, you know, maximizing margins, things like that. There, there's years like when, you know, with any business, there is periods for growth and there's pre periods for profitability where you focus on one or the other. Uh, sometimes you'll focus on growth over uh, and give up some profitability just so you can grow and 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 put yourself in a better position for the long term, and then vice versa. Sometimes there's times to step back, and we saw that at the end of the 360 generation, where you know, like they stopped really investing in a lot of first party stuff, and they're like, "All right, now we're just going to maximize what we got here and make as much money as we can." Um, so, like, I think over this past year, you've seen a Microsoft that was trying to maximize profits and stuff like that. And I only mention that because in, in doing so, we saw that. They held back on consoles and they had their record quarter, right? And this is before ABK. So um, so it, it kind of, it, not kind of, it completely highlights how the game has changed. And, you know, I think really going forward, it's not just, uh, it's, it's not just them right now trying to, um, you know, consoles are are not irrelevant, but it's really about keeping all worlds open. Because I've I've heard a lot of talk over the last two days for whatever reason about them. You know, well, if that's the case, then are they going to get out of consoles and go third party? No, that's like, ridiculous. Well, no. Well, like why? Why would you close? It's like you want to keep all lanes open on your freeway, right? To like you don't care what lane the customer takes. You just want yep. them to get where you get where you want them to go. And so, why would you close down a lane that's still <laughs> It's still a relevant lane for now, right? It's still a, a highly used lane. Uh, it's still important for the future. And it's still going to be where you're going to bring in a lot of the next generation. And I think that's another key aspect of, of kind of moving forward on this and where Call of Duty is going to probably have its biggest impact. You know, I Game Pass has been around six years. But in that six years, really, for, for a lot of it, uh, there wasn't a lot of AAA exclusives a lot of day one triple a games and, and when we did get them it was halo gears and forza which you know who do those appeal to they appeal to like the core base that probably were your early adopters on game pass already and in that phase it was basically an infant and i would even say that even now <laughs> game pass is still a little kid in terms of where it is and in, in its growth trajectory it's not until they it's not until they get a triple a game out a quarter like they're talking about every two to three months that it's going to start to grow more and then i think call of duty is finally going to take it to adulthood and that's when you're going to have the soccer mom that's going to remember what yeah. know what game pass is right and that's when you're going to kind of see that impact and so like for anybody who thinks like you know they're going to get out of consoles because look at how the, the the numbers are splitting out and how that's trending it's like you're i think you're going to see with abk you're finally going to see the value of the series s um yeah. because it's the next generation every year i said this on the i think the last show i was on every year people die every year people are born 
the markets, you know, they sh every few years, the markets will shift mm -hmm. based on how the new, the new consumers act and the new consumer that, you know, the new gamer, like even guys like my son, my 14 year old son, he plays he, his Xbox is his streams, YouTube, and he plays on his iPad. He plays uh, Minecraft on his iPad. <laughs> They're a different, and it's, he's not unique. I mean, like a lot of the kids, they'll play Fortnite, uh, you know, even like uh, my, my girlfriend's Roblox. Side. He's, he's 19 and, and he plays free to play games and then he buys Madden every year. That's what they, and, and that they, they, to them, the idea of spending $70 for a experience that is over in 30 hours is like, makes no sense to them. It's a One different, bet. it's a different demographic. And so where, where I think this value of the series S and it is going to come in and, and the console is that this is going to be a way for Microsoft to try to convert some of those, some of that generation of gamers that, yeah, you know, if, if things didn't change, I do think your AAA seventy dollar thirty hour experience is going to die out, or at least at, at you know at least at that super well, high. Well, it's going to go level. somewhere else, and that's it's kind gonna, of the thing. To right? double so, A, right, or or other. So, well, no, I think it's part, just going to be available via your your normal devices. I, like the AAA experience will be available everywhere, and that's kind of the. So look, Microsoft saw that, and they're going mobile, yeah, and that's where Game Pass will grow. It's actually going to be on mobile, but we have to get there, right? PC has some growth available to it. I don't think console has much growth left, right? I don't think they're going to sell no, 180 does, million growing. consoles. That's yeah. just not going to happen, right? right? So I don't expect them to go. Like my expectation was, if they can hit 60 million in this generation, that is a fantastic outcome. If yeah. They can hit 80 million that's way beyond what i was expecting and by the way those numbers were validated by the leaks from the ftc that's what their targets are 60 and 8 that's their target yes. so th I, I, that's exactly where i've always been it's 60 million is where you're going to get and that's fantastic for this generation they're not looking to be number one in consoles no. they're looking to be number one in revenue and profit and right I, and they uh, can pull that off they the can pull that off can. And, and they want the monthly active engagement Right. And build the value of the IPs. I think people underestimate that. Exactly. That That is future proofing yourself. The value, when you're spending all this money, when you spent all this money in ABK, um, it wasn't because they it's had to buy the, the IP. Yeah. It wasn't because Correct. they had the pr prettiest games Correct. in the world or uh, the most yep. innovative games in the world. It's because the, the, it, the Call of Duty name, the Candy Crush name, the Warcraft name, those, those names well, are worth. OBM people lot. have people build nostalgia to these to these IPs, and that's why Nintendo and PlayStation has been so so that's successful. Yeah, you know, I mean, throughout time, it's because their IPs they've built this yeah. engagement with their audience that us here on this panel, <laughs> probably in the chat, we're always going to buy a Mario game, we're always going to buy Kratos, we're always going to buy God of War, you know, uh, stuff like that, and that's and right now what what Xbox did was that they expanded beyond just gears halo and forza and that that was much needed which is why these acquisitions were so huge for them they have those ips now yep. that are going to garnish the good faith of of the gamers and now we're always going to buy the new call of duty when it comes out now and we're and it's going to be an xbox problem well, I'm, I'm not buying it because it's oh, going to be, be my pass. service <laughs> well yeah pass. yeah so but you know what i mean yeah. to hey, i want to just... give you guys an example real quick how yeah, i know xbox is growing and people are coming in Every and now and then, when wait. I'm in, every now and then, in a mode, I've been trying. <laughs> every now and then, I go and check people that I play a multiplayer with, and you know what I see them zero years new with. I mean, zero years, but they got gamer score, and a lot of them got to be new players. You can yep. go and check stats of people you play with, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, these people only got like. 500 and some achievements. So let me see. What they those, those are those PlayStation yeah, players that they play no, in the dark. It, it they play in the dark and then they say, no, no, it, we don't play Xbox and they're playing. It, but it, it, I mean, that doesn't matter. That's still somebody that's on Xbox that's ascribed to their service, whether yep. it's just regular Xbox Live or Game Pass. But they subscribe to the that's... service to play the game. And that's what Microsoft <laughs> is mostly looking for. Now, eventually, they probably will convert over to Game Pass as soon as these games start hitting left and right. That's what Microsoft wants. Engagement. Because if you are on the service, you're either going to yep. buy the game without Game Pass, or you're going to get Game Pass because you're tired of spending all that money. And the last so thing is going to be one of the... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me wrap this up. Because I don't take that long. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good, sir. Actually, my bad. Right, go ahead, go ahead cool. brother. It's cool, my friend. But 
once they get that engagement and get people hooked, then they're going to start investing more and more into the ecosystem. They're going to find friends. They want to get them. A person like me with 20 years, I'm not going to do no newbie. <laughs> I, I'm not going to put a newbie on my friends list. Y'all know how that works. But <laughs> that's the engagement. Then they make friends. Then they get locked into the system because they made friends. And they're going to play where their friends play. But with Game Pass, now you don't have to buy the game separately. If your friend don't have it, if both of you got Game Pass back, you can go play the the first the multiplayer together by just yeah. downloading it. That makes Microsoft money. The engagement of people. It's never been about the console. If your friend has a PC and he got to play on PC, both of you guys can play a game together that's multiplayer. Yeah. That's where the money is. Well, yeah. That's where people yeah, yeah, the yeah, money. Yeah. Last thing, last well, I think thing. John, you had something, right? So yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll just mine will be real fast, Hargy. This is where the genius is here. All right, guys. The 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 most played games on PlayStation, Hargy. Can you repeat the the top two? Um, I would, if I had to guess, I would say it's Minecraft and Call of Duty. Those would be the top that I would think. Outside okay. of that, I don't know. It might be Fortnite or Apex or something okay. like that. Now so, Roblox too. Roblox is just so, Roblox is there. That's right. So that means that all of those players playing on a PlayStation, they're Xbox gamers. That's yep. the genius in this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, look, look, so it's on the console thing, I know, like, uh, OBM, you were kind of pushing into the, like, the Xbox taking market share thing. I don't care about that. I don't think Microsoft cares about that. Yeah, I don't think no. they what, do. Not, not like that. No. I, I don't think they care about that at all. What they want is engagement, right? And if that's on yeah. PC, they're happy. If it's in cloud, they're, they're happy. If it's in mobile, they, they don't care. Wherever it is, you just need to engage with them. They're happy, right? Yeah. So, I've been but, saying that for years. But <laughs> Nintendo and PlayStation still play this game of being console, right? That's yes. their focus. That's their main PlayStation's play. yep. trying to go to PC, right? But now here, here's the thing. If all their games are games as a service, we already heard from them, those will launch day and date on PC. That means you don't need a PlayStation console if all their games are going to be that, right? So if they pivot away back and say, no, 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 we're going to have these single player games. It'll stay on, on PS5 and then it'll be three years later before you get it on PC. Perhaps you need a you know, PlayStation 5. This is where I'm, I'm, I'm saying there's going to be a problem, right? Because Nintendo, their games are only going to be on Nintendo, right? right? And, and their, you know, the Switch games are going to be there. Switch 2, whatever it is, are going to be there. And you'll want those games so you'll get that console. And if you have that console and it plays everything, including Call of Duty, you might just stay there. And say, well, I don't need a PlayStation because what am I going to do with it, right? So, and if those games that they're making on, on Sony's side don't hit, they're in trouble, right? So, what yeah. what are they going to have? They, they need something to draw you in. And that, I think, is the distinction. I don't know if Xbox will take market share from them, especially internationally. It seems unlikely. But Nintendo but, was the original. But they the, but do the, have that ability. And, and the future of gaming is really about the app, right? Because eventually yeah. we're going to get we're going to get to that point. I mean, we, yep. we we've seen this Rog Ally is is like Amazing. barely <laughs> it's barely a tip of an iceberg. Like exactly. today, today, like people, I think struggle to see it, but at some point in time, you're going to see these ecosystems. Everything that's on your yep. console, I'm I, I'm I would bet at some point in time. Uh, in the future, both Microsoft and Sony will negotiate with these third parties that when they're going to come to the platform, that means anywhere the app is, right? It doesn't just mean the console. Phil means... loves his ROG ally, it, dude. It, oh, he loves it's it. Good. And, and you're going to eventually see devices that play all of it because basically then you, this ROG ally is, ally is basically a console. I mean, for all yeah, intents and purposes, absolutely. right? To, to, the, to the average Joe Schmo that hasn't grown up with the closed ecosystems it just feels like going but from I think that's apple iphone thing, to android right it right is the closed ecosystem is going to go away right right because yeah. ubisoft can sell you games on their own system right their own store their own like they have their own ubisoft plus you can just get it from them you don't need to give money to xbox or playstation or nintendo i, or I still Steam. think that, i still get think those them. i still Epic, think those yeah, companies thing, will, right? will so i think they will they will eventually coalesce to we yeah. all have a sub right? EA and Ubisoft are already doing it. They'll all yeah. do it. And you'll just be on you know, your whatever device and say, well, this month I like to, I want to play some Square Enix games. So I'm going to yeah. subscribe to Square yeah. Enix, play why my Square it, Enix why games. Why hasn't Sony put EA access in their service yet? 
Why? I think there's some exclusivity deal. Oh, yeah, you mean because EA Access is on PlayStation, right? I think it's yeah, but you got to pay for it every year. Yep, you yep. still got to pay for but it. I think there's it's some exclusivity deal with with uh, Xbox. I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm just guessing. Yeah, that Xbox guessing has an Microsoft exclusivity deal with that. Lock that one down. Much like Ubisoft Plus, right? That's that's lo- or Ubisoft Plus Classics or whatever it is is locked to PlayStation Plus, right? Uh, so I don't I don't know that that would come to to Game Pass. But either way, the, the, that. Eventually, I think it's just going to be there's an open platform, whether it's Android, whether it's on PC, that you will just subscribe to whatever you want. I want the content from Bandai Namco. Cool. You can either buy it or subscribe and go play your content, right? I don't think it's going to be as as locked down uh, into just the Xbox store or the PlayStation store. It's just going to be open. Boom, That's I want to ask you systems. I want to ask you a question before we move on, and it's going to be a quick one for you, Boom. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Do you think, because I want I want to know your thoughts on this. Do you Do you think that by next generation... PlayStation is planting the seeds that they're going to be day and date on PC because I, I can see it coming from it's a mile away. Coming. It, I mean, it, it, they Someday. have to, right? Like, it, like, it, it, I mean, to, to, I mean, to be to be fair, it, it, it would almost be, uh, I, I don't know, a career suicide, if you will, or, or 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 just digging your own grave, so to speak, if they refuse to take their head out of the sand, if they don't evolve with the industry and they keep going the way of we're going to sell you a box. You're going to buy our 70 or $80 game and you're going to buy our peripheral. And that's the way they do business. Then they're not going to last long. I mean, you, you heard of Sir X-Men, you've heard everyone here, especially OBM. The fact that you can play literally any Xbox game anywhere right now, you can play it on your pewter. You can play it on your TV. You can play it in your rock ally. You can play it on your console all of these multitude of things that you can play on go the way of the subscription. If a game's in there, you can pretty much play it anywhere. And if Sony does not evolve, if they think that it's just going to be, well, we're going to, first of all, the mistake that they made was not trying to, and, and, and it's shocking, Hargi. And I, I, I want to ask you this is it not shocking that considering they have some pretty stout IP? that could have easily translated over to gas. The fact that Factions 2 is on ice and dead is crazy. The fact that they didn't reach out and say, hey, let's let's get the SOCOM license going again. Why don't we try this? Because at least it'll give Call of Duty a run for its money. Yeah. Oh, Kill us all, too. Ro- Ro- Rocket, Rocket League does really well, right? Wouldn't it be really super cool, uh, 600 people that are here, if you can get a Twisted Metal gas game? Like, how dope would that be? <laughs> so, uh, look, there's this organic growth thing, right? I agree with those IPs coming back, but I agree with Sir X-Men. You want to take them, make them multiplayer? Just make multiplayer games first because they've lost that ability. First, you got to get to that and say, okay, cool. Now I can see if there's a way to make it live, right? You have to first be able to say, I can make a multiplayer game people will play. They haven't made one for a while, right? Yeah. Outside of, of buying Bungie. But that's what you do. Just you mentioned Rocket League. They could go buy them, right? They could keep it everywhere because it makes more sense to just keep it everywhere. But they could just go buy them. Don't right? give them any ideas, Hargy. Damn it. No, no. I, this, <laughs> this, but this, look, I just playing. I just playing. Them, that's what they need to do. Yeah, right? I agree. But this I organic agree. growth baloney. Is stop, like, no, no, you need to, like, you bought Bungie. That is not organic growth. You bought Microsoft's X Studio. No, just just go buy a small game. You, you mentioned, um, what was it? Uh, Fall Guys. Buy them. Just buy them, right? That's what you do. You go buy a small, because this is where that usually comes. The magic happens with an indie developer that comes up with a cool concept that people latch onto, right? Yep. So that's how you get into these live service games. That's a much better way to do it. Right. Either you say, look, we're going to give you a small team, go figure out something and come back to us because we're not spending 300 million, 200 million to make that's this. That's a great point, Hargi. Right. Great point. Look we'll how much million. party animals is making. And that's exactly. a live service game. And it's exclusive right? to Xbox. Why, you, guys, no, you, guys don't believe in ra- <laughs> you guys don't believe in reindeer games? I, I mean, fair games. Well, fair games. I think- <laughs> and I don't know how much they spent on that, but whatever. I, you know, I, we'll see how that goes, right? That, that was a, 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 I don't know what the acquisition cost was for that. And that was kind of a X, I think, like Stadia game or something that got to, I don't know, whatever, right? But either way, that's the path you take, right? You just say, like my, in Minecraft, right? They bought that, right? Microsoft just went and bought it. 
you could do the same thing, right? You don't have to go spend umpteen tens of billions of dollars. Just go buy a small studio that's got a game that's taking off. Just buy it. And, that, and put it and everywhere. That gives them a live service. Exactly. Leave it everywhere. That makes <laughs> For a live game, you want to be everywhere, right? Yeah. Just do that. That is how you build up your live service catalog and say, okay, cool. Now we got recurring revenue from that. Let's see what else is out there, right? And start working that. That's how you go with that kind of thing. I don't think it works saying... Hey, you know, Naughty Dog, go make me a live service game because they they don't do that, right? But I do agree, make a multiplayer. They've done that before. Start, you know, pushing yourself to make that. Okay, that's a possibility. You could do something interesting with some of the other IPs as well. Uh, but I wouldn't say make it live. Make a multiplayer game. Go make a SOCOM, just a multiplayer game. Yeah. Get your feet wet on making a multiplayer game. Don't try to make it a live game. Live game, just... Think of Halo, a well-established multiplayer game. How difficult was it to make that into a live game? It's Very not difficult. an easy thing to do. It's not it, an easy it, thing it, to it, do. Well, I mean, look, I mean, I, I don't know if you've played it, Hargeet. Now, granted, I'm going to tell you this right now. You saw the change in Season 3. Yep. Season 5? Is it's God much tier? It is much better. Yeah. Freaking phenomenal, yeah. folks. I, I, I don't fire think, fights there. You I don't play think, some fire guys, fight maps. Look, look. Yeah. I'm not a marketing genius, and I don't think it's that difficult for them. If, if they were to do SOCOM, look, they don't need to go out and get the Ninja Turtles IP. You know the the other IPs from different places. They can start with their own stuff. Sell Kratos skins, Aloy skins, which people will fall asleep if you if you equip it. But whatever. But buy buy yourself some. Use your own IPs at first. To, to kind of incentivize people to spend money on the multiplayer game and mm. go from there and then you can outreach and you can say all right this yeah, month this go. month yeah. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna introduce transformers skins you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Yep. dude it's right there come John, on there, John there are, they it. are still making money on the master chief collection a yep. 10 year old game and yeah. people <laughs> are still playing at PC and console. That's how you make money. A 10-year-old yeah. game is still making you money. Yep. Yeah. And that's yep. what Sony didn't well, understand. Listen, uh, real quick, let me catch up on the Super Chats. Uh, OBM, you got to get out of here, right, brother? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little overdue. I got a lot of work tonight. I'm, right, I'm going to be up I, I'm going to be up really late tonight. Oh. So, uh, but it was great to get a chance to chat with you guys. You're awesome, well, OBM. Great. Honestly, brother, you, you you brought your A game. A lot, lot of really big points. Love when you go when you go crazy and you and you just let you know you let your points fly. You definitely make a lot of really good ones. Love uh, you, enjoy bro. the rest of your night, brother. We uh, we appreciate you dropping by. I'm sure I'll Catch be you, uh, yeah. hearing from you guys all very soon. Uh, <laughs> <great>. <laughs> See me on that private chat. <laughs> so Everybody have fun. a great night. Talk to all right, brother. See you later. Thanks. Listen, Thanks. the first super chat of the day came the way of BT Maverick 707, who dropped an outstanding and very generous $10 super chat and says, Is Jim Sterling going to keep that same LGBTQ energy for Spider Man as he did against Starfield? Guess not. Uh, shame on Sony who caved in for the dollar rather than human rights. Thank you guys. Appreciate you all. And if you're not sure uh, <laughs> what he is talking about, um, besides the cu Cuban flag uh, scenario, <laughs> that, that, that que pasa really, USA? <laughs> it's, it's just an egregious mistake. Uh, it's fine. Whatever. They, they addressed it. They didn't apologize, which I'm a little disappointed about, but at least they're going to address it. The bug situation, which is egregious also. Uh, unfortunately, in order to sell their game in the uh, 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 different parts of the country, specifically like Saudi Arabia, they had to remove all of the uh, the, 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 the pride flags and, uh, and, 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 uh, from the game. Uh, because obviously in those countries, that is, that's not tolerated. It's considered a capital crime. So uh, they had to do that in order to sell there. Uh, look, I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I, I just wouldn't have sold there. Uh, I know it's money, but you know they should have stayed. It's just should have, <laughs> they should have stayed their ground. But what, what do I know anyway? I'm, yeah, I, but it's been it's been like that for years in that country. No, 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 no. It, it, that that's the culture, and I understand yeah. why they they did it. I, I I understand that 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 is the culture, and you cannot go yeah. against culture. That's what they believe. So I'm not going to fight against it. I'm just saying that yeah. it's just a, it, it it. I put it this way. Instead of being celebrated as a sequel to two of their finest games, and Insomniac is no slouch, folks. They're an amazing studio. Spider-Man 2 has been marred with controversy after controversy after con It's just, it's like they keep stepping on rakes. It's crazy, but whatever. Um, the gamers play HUD Zero. He's been a channel member for two 
years. Brother, that is insane. Thank you so much for the outstanding support. He says, boom, panel, and the millions of Xbox fans. Enter the Xbox world order. When you are down with the XBO, you are down for life. 2024, <laughs> uh, the Xbox era. Yeah, I, I think, I mean... I think Microsoft is going to win publisher of the year easily this year without even, a, a I mean, again, no, I don't know. Nintendo has two. They have a couple of them. They have quite a few. They have Pikmin. They have Zelda. They have. They also know, have some other. stinkers as well. But, uh, but what did Xbox publish specifically? Because uh, Bethesda okay. is its own publisher. Right? Okay, maybe that's it. Its yeah, own. you know what? You're right. You're right? right. Activision is its own. Blizzard is its own. Yeah, so, it was, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know have, what they Xbox has actually put out. Have they well, put they have, they have. I mean, they obviously have Motorsport, which is the one. Yes, so that would be but the one. But it's yeah. under the umbrella of Microsoft, so it still counts. No, no, no yeah, well, uh, it does not. So when they did it last time with 2021, right? That was when they won. Right, it was Thanks, only X- Redfall. Only just, Thanks yeah. a lot, Redfall. Well, that's Bethesda. <laughs> but that's Bethesda. So they yeah. Oh, that's count, right. That's right. You're right. They did not count anything from Bethesda that year. They only counted the stuff that was from uh, Xbox, Xbox Game, Game Studios. Studios. Yes. 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 So. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, look, at the end of the day, all, all these games are an Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> you who you know who the winner is? Not Microsoft, even though they're, they have they're, they're trillionaires. The players are the winner. We, we, we are the winner. This year, right? Yeah. They put age on yes. um, age two and four. Yep. On um on on console. On, on console. Yeah. Those would count. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I I honestly now that I think about it, I think Nintendo wins publisher the year because just Mario and Zelda alone is just <laughs> ridiculous. Um we yeah, have they also um, had Pikmin also. They've had Pikmin also yeah, Pikmin four. Yeah. yeah. And like the that, remake, yeah. uh Pikmin one and two was out there as yeah, well. Which they is also pretty remake, good. Which is pretty damn good. I bought it. Uh <laughs> Maxi Coleman drops a very generous five dollar super chat and says the people leaving PlayStation are the people who uh, who don't uh, want to work for the new owner. PlayStation is sold. I mean, you know, a small piece of me hopes that someone buys Sony not for not not for the console war shenanigans. It's so they don't own Spider Man anymore. Because I the minute be they Google. the the minute they get sold, those Spider Man rights revert back mm-hmm. to the original owner, which is Marvel, which is owned by Disney. And that means that maybe uh, you know Spider-Man games will come back to the platform. That that's what that's what I would I'm hoping for. Kingfish seven three seven, who's been a channel member for twenty one months, brother. That is crazy. Thank you so much for the support. He says hello, boom and panel. Just got off work and I'm enjoying the topics and conversation. Hashtag gaming is for everyone. Indeed, it is. Spartan six six one drops a very generous five dollar super chat and says. I'm in the impression that Sony needs to fire someone. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. They they are firing too many people from firing Phil to self-destruction karma. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it is what it is. Uh, um, and Bluga Bravo drops not one but two $5 Super Chats. And the first one, he says, Hargeet, do you think it's worth getting a Nintendo Switch now or waiting for the Switch 2? So we don't have confirmation whether it's going to be backwards compatible or not, right? So that is kind of the headache here, right? So if if it is backwards compatible, obviously wait, but we don't know that. And there are rumors that it's it's up or down. They don't know if they're going to go one way or the other. If there's a bunch of games you haven't played on the Switch, there are certainly a lot of awesome games that uh, the Switch has. A lot. So if you want to play those games, go for it. Usually at the end of the gen is a really good time to buy the previous gen because all the games usually are cheaper except for nintendo uh yeah. because nintendo has yeah. cartridges and those <laughs> cartridges have a base cost so um you know hopefully you can get a good deal over the the holiday season if you do there's a bundle or whatever i'd say go for it i don't know if it's going to be compatible or not with with uh the I previous hope it is. bowser Everybody actually know, uh Hargeet, but... doug bowser did recently say in an interview he kind of hinted that digital stuff was going to but not physical stuff kind of hinted that way yeah so at least you have a path but yes that does kind of suck because people who have the physicals will obviously that's and get a a new one don't get a used one because of the stick disc problems with the older ones yeah i got pc i don't worry about those things Mm now and if you're gonna (laughs) if you're gonna wear a pirate patch every now and again so uh there's that 
<laughs> if you're gonna play it on the on the TV, I highly recommend just buy the. Uh, there's a whole bunch of of, of uh, third party ones as well, but there's a Pro controller. It's much like the Xbox controller. Uh, just get that or get one of the many compatible ones instead yeah. of using the Joy Cons. I, I I'd recommend I, getting I, one I, of the, I can't uh, use the other ones. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's too small. But that, that, I mean, a good point. And his second super chat for five dollars, he says. But ponies say they're okay with Cuban uh, Miles Morales. And I, <laughs> oh, just, yeah. Don't, don't, say that. That. Don't, don't say that. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. I know what he's saying. He's saying Dipinga Arce. And I, I don't know if I said it correctly. No, but... no. It's like this, boom. It's like this. All right. I'm the Cuban in the house. Dipinga yes. Arce. Dolly. <laughs> Yeah, Let me get know. my translator thing out because I didn't know you, what you, you want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. It's a, I, I, I know the word. That's why I, 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 I did butcher it though. So Dean Rivera drops a very generous five dollars super chat and says, "Did you see that Phil Spencer has been playing Candy Crush on Xbox?" Say Ooh, what? That's been happening Somebody for a while. Just I, I, someone I, just DM'd me with a picture of his profile. That oh, says let me log Xbox and, and it says Candy yeah. Crush. I, I I think that's I I want to say it was like four or five months ago or something. I, somebody had seen that uh, you know uh, happening before. So it was mm. it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it this probably will come to happening. all consoles. And it makes sense. Just put it everywhere. Just put it everywhere. <laughs> uh, Fantas Archer drops a very generous five dollar super chat and says to OBM's point. Until cloud and mobile are a bit more stable, in my opinion, consoles and PC are most stable avenues to release games on. Yeah, I believe that as well. The console's not going anywhere, folks. Highlander double one generous friend of the program, drops a $5 Super Chat and says, right now with ZeniMax and ABK, Microsoft is a larger publisher than Sony. I think they will use that to their advantage in getting games for Game Pass. Oh, dude, here's the thing. You're 100% right. I, th right now, people go to Sony because they're the market leader. Xbox is going to get so big and Game Pass is going to be so prevalent that you're going to start to see that people that were focused on the market leader at Sony are now going to start looking over at Microsoft and say, wait a second, they got how many? 50, 60, 100 million subscribers? What, what, what do you think they are now? What do you think they are now? Because we know 40. We know 40 happened when they did the conversion from gold. Right. So they're above 40. So yeah. if they got so many subscribers, how many did they get from I mean, Starfield? Could they be? Could they be forty-five? <laughs> could they be probably 50? right? I mean, I, right? I, I think it's safe to say at least forty-five. They're not going to say those numbers ever again because they said that the the third-party people are asking too much money from them now. So yeah. they're keeping it keeping it under wraps. You know, need to know basis, which is smart of them because they don't want, for example, Alan Wake Two to cost them, you know, three hundred million dollars to to get put on on Game <laughs> no, no, Pass. It, it, it makes it look. I, I think there's going to come a point where people are going to come to Xbox because yes, when you have fifty, sixty, or seventy million pe people in your service, all you got to do is drop a game there, and and it's instant access. See, that's the one yep. thing. That's the beautiful thing about Xbox Game Pass, especially for indies is because it gets put on front street. It gets into Xbox Game Pass. People see it and people are like, "Oh, that's new." And they play it and they download it. Listen, it's it's it, it's going to be so, all rainbows for them. One other thing with that and this is an interesting point was the AAA development cost, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to take a shot at something, right? And say, yeah. "I don't know if this is going to win," right? If it's going to actually hit the market and and actually work out, this could be an avenue, right? You could say, "Hey, I'm going to yes. take a shot." That's I'm true. gonna work with Xbox and say, look, we're gonna put it in Game Pass. We'll we'll co-develop as far as like the cost sharing because you're we're gonna pay for Game Pass, whatever, right? So, uh, and that way they take less of a hit. They can try something new, and we can get AAA games that actually are outside of the the standard, you know, uh, Assassin's Creed or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Like so. I, I think that is an avenue. Hopefully, is being explored. But I think that's the thing. Once they get to like 50, 60, 70 million. I think that kind of, kind of thing might. You know, start you know. Happening. When's the next time we're gonna find out how many subscribers they have when all the information gets leaked in their next acquisition? <laughs> oh my <laughs> That's god! That's when we're gonna find you're out. You're messy. Yeah. You're messy. I love it. Uh, real quick before we get to outros, because folks, the show. I don't want to go to the show more than two hours, and obviously, there's we have plenty of two more shows left this week. So we're gonna get into what happened, uh, probably on Friday. What happened to Blizzard tomorrow? We're gonna be talking about at noon. I should be. And I reached out to King David. He said he's more than likely going to be there. I'm going to see if I can get another guest on. Uh, I ain't got for... nothing to do. 
Well, listen, I, I had you here today, brother. I, I, I super appreciate it. But I, I, I do have I, I have I do have someone scheduled. No, I don't want to cool. make the announcement just in case, you know, I don't want to you know, obviously shut him out and then they can't be here. But tomorrow we're going to be talking about Call of Duty Gulf War. And we're talking Ooh. about that because that is going to be the first Call of Duty that drops into Xbox Game Pass. And if you thought that the numbers for a Starfield were crazy, wait, I can tell you right now, there's going to be five to one. Five to one. But we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And again, I'm working on Friday show. And obviously, it's still early in the week. It's only Wednesday. We could learn some more stuff. And I'm very excited because it's just news dropping after an, one after another. We have Spartan 661 drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, Xbox left a sour taste with me when they dissolved Zoom. Mrs. Boom still <laughs> uses hers. It's right here. And she even has the boom box that plugs into it. And she uses it all the freaking time. She actually has a backup one, and I even have a Halo one. Remember they yes. the Halo edition? Oh, the Halo, Halo 3. The Halo 3 one. Actually... I wanted that sucker. Oh, I have it. Man. I have that's... it in storage, brother. It's one, it's, it's one of my, it's one of the few collectibles that, like, that, that that's like I would, a prized treasure I would never get rid of. Um, and I still last, got my Nokia okay. and Gage. Oh, oh, wow. That's, that's really <laughs> taking it back. He said, uh, Spartan says, I bought a lot of things and it just died. I never got compensated. Cloud scares me at, at at points. Yeah, I mean, if you lose all your stuff, you lose all your stuff. I I see you. Yes, see your point. Uh, and lastly, Boss Red seventy seven drops a very generous five dollars. Super chat says, "No, no sales. Uh, sell us games that play more like movies. Uh, time button mashing uh, every five minutes, and make sure it's set to ultra easy. I guess he's talking about Spider Man. I see what you're doing. <laughs> or there. You, Sony you, games. Drag the car, yeah. boom! Drag the car! Don't let it flip over, boom! <laughs> <laughs> Pound on X! Pound on X, oh, baby! My, my <laughs> secret yeah, slander. Uh, that was secret slander. I love, I love All, secret slander. Only the, adult, only the adults can figure that one out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. But ladies and gentlemen, listen. Hopefully, you enjoyed your your two hours with us. Uh, shout out to OBM for joining us. We had a great conversation. Microsoft is hitting on all switches, and right now is probably the best time you could ever be to join the platform because you're really getting your money's worth. Instead of being charged and raked over the coals the way Nintendo does with their remakes and the way Sony does with their oh, oh, you know, price gouging, I mean, if, if money is an issue and you really want to get your, your, value, your value proposition, there's no better place than Xbox. And like I said, now they're starting to hit with their first party but let's start with the outros. Sir X-Men, brother, let's uh let's get you on out of here. Where could people reach out to you on social media? And what else you got going on, dude? Uh, most likely GRG on Friday. You guys mm -hmm. all know where my buddy K Mega. Um, other than that, I'll float around when available. If anybody needs me for anything, I'm just hanging out. Yeah, and, well, we uh, appreciate you being joining us and, tonight, brother. And you Thank notice you. I went through the whole show without saying Sony's on business welfare. Okay. Oh, uh, well, you, you, <laughs> you just said it. You, you, it's all ruined. It's all ruined. Um, Hargeet, brother, sell, sell the brand of, of course, Asa and our good friend Gaz or Septic Sauce for Game On Daily. Uh, his Septic Sauce, his videos have been on fire. I'm sure that there's one cooking up for him. He's been very, very active on social media, especially on Twitter. And he's been out there stoking those fires as Gaz is known to do. Talk about it, man. Yeah, so check out uh, GameOnDaily.com and YouTube.com slash GameOnDaily. Uh, and Septic Sauce is the channel for Gaz where he uh, puts the sauce videos. Uh, so check that out on YouTube. Um, yeah, and then uh, I don't know when we're going get, to get back to RDX. It's probably still going to be a, a few weeks. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we get that back going and then we can uh, you know, have people come to that podcast. Uh, and then otherwise, just catch me here, right? Well, every Wednesday on Primetime Gaming at 7 uh, US Eastern Time. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and and, you know what? and I'm available you... on Discord at yeah, HDN. And uh, Xbox at H Shiny. I'm not on any other social media. Oh, and thanks for coming on, Sir X Men and John. Hargi, uh, join me on some call. Show, join me on some Call of Duty later tonight, bro. Let's, oh, uh, man. I don't know let, about that. Let's meet on some <laughs> PlayStation fanboys. I'm fan Persona. I want to get it done before it leaves Game Pass, which is the end of the month. Uh, so, And if people don't know, that's like a 100, 130-hour oh, game. That's a full-time <laughs> so, job right there. I know. Persona 5 is very, very long. 
Oh, I think I've already gosh. put in like 30, 40 hours, but uh, but yeah, I have a ways to go to get through that. But anyway, uh, that is what I've been doing. <laughs> no, well, pre- appreciate appreciate you being here, uh, Hargit, as always. And I, of course, lo- love the uh, the hot takes. And John, thank you again for joining us. I, I, thank, I appreciate you joining us because it was a last minute request. Please, by all means, sell your brand. Talk about your YouTube channel. Where can people subscribe? But more importantly, where could people check you out? With Kay Asante, which, by the way, congratulations, Kay. He just crossed 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. A big congratulations to him and Everborn Saga for dropping it like it's hot on a regular basis for the Gaming Circle podcast. But, John, where could people check you and Kay out each and every Monday to kind of bring us noobs into the PCMR? Yeah, thanks, Boom. It was a pleasure being here, Boom. I really wanted to bring some good energy. Xbox, like you said, is kicking on all cylinders, man. It's a good time to just be a gamer in general, man. I mean, no matter what platform you're playing on right now, you're eating good. You know, some some you're eating a little bit of bugs here and there, but but you're still eating good, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, there's you some got, flies. There's some flies. Raid. You got any raid? You know, eventually, <laughs> eventually you get a little, you get a little fly in your sandwich here and there, but, but it's still good. All right. To be on some consoles. All right. But seriously, guys, hit me up on Twitter, Xbox, uh, PlayStation, John Wolf, just like it says there, as boom mentioned me and Kay Asante every Monday, every Mondays at seven, we, we, uh, do the gamers playground where this past weekend we had a ton of fun boom because we, we talked a little bit about PCMR, but then me and, me and Kay Asante were just showing off all of our controllers. Me and him, dude, we have like a combined, like we have literally like hundreds of controllers. So wow. we were just showing some of our favorites to game on That's PC cool. and emulation. It's a game. It's, it's a show for gamers in the sense that just come on by. We, we, it's a casual chat. Like if you were chatting with your, with your buddies, drinking a mm-hmm. beer or whatever the case may be, that's the way we kind of like to tackle that guys. Thank you so much. K, congratulations on 2K uh, uh, subscribers. And boom, you always have the one of the best shows, the Thank best you, panelists, man. And Hargeet, Sir x Men, I love chatting with you guys. I can chat with you guys all day for hours on end. Peace, everyone. We we'll definitely appreciate that. Real quick, we have, I uh, just want to, Sensei Matrix. He says, great panel. Thanks, so brother. Appreciate you being here. And Live Supremacy says, don't forget, folks, tomorrow, Dead Space remake in Xbox Game Pass and I gotta beat that. I'm actually I'm I'm like like halfway through. It's so good. And if you wear headphones and you play at night, man, wear some extra underwear. You're gonna poop your pants. I'm telling you right now, the game is scary. But of course, this week we have Alan Wake, which looks oh my god. This week is Alan Wake, folks. And next week, next Tuesday is Robocop. This is crazy. Oh, yeah, god. this is nuts. It's just <laughs> Too many games. There's but let's just Sant as well, right? I don't know if people have been Ooh. paying. Is it that? Oh yes, or? that's that's the rock climbing one or the mountain climbing one. Didn't that? Yeah. Oh me? yeah, yes. I wanted to play that. That looks yeah, good. That looks at the end of the. Yeah. Is it next week? I think it's next week. It may be next um, week. Just Sant. Yeah, yeah that's that actually another looks... super chat. <laughs> oh, we got an. Okay, we had one come in here. Let's see who that is. Oh, ho- homeless bird. Welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you so much for the two dollars. Super chat says, "Have fun with." P P five persona five Royale. Eat, yeah <laughs> it's a worthy endeavor yeah I mean I, will. <laughs> I, I I I tried I'm not gonna front I bought the collector's edition when it came out and after my fourth train ride I was like yeah this is just it's just not yeah. for me so. and boom if you're gonna keep on playing Spider Man without that patch the only thing I can tell you is Hakuta Matata okay uh, slimy yet satisfying yet. okay because yeah, the bugs are slimy yet satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Uh, but listen, a big thank you to all of the super chats that came in this evening. We super appreciate that. Again, we have another r- giant contest coming out the first Friday <laughs> of November, which is next week. We are doing Mrs. Boom's birthday bash, and of course, we're giving away five hundred dollars worth of gift cards. That's right, ten fifty dollar gift cards. Wow! And all you gotta do to win is be in the chat. And again. You see, I know, like, I don't, I don't like, we don't, you know, this becomes a business, unfortunately. And one of the things, one of the things that Mrs. Boom and I love doing is giving back. And even though the five hundred dollar one is big, and we had one for for my birthday bash in September, folks, I'm here to tell you that this December, on our sixth annual Christmas with Mr. and Mrs. Boomstick, we are doing something that we have never done before. Last year. We wanted to up the ante at Mrs. Boom's request, and we gave away $1,000 worth of prizes. This year, when the year started, 
Mrs. Boom came again. She said, listen, the year's tough for a lot of people. And we, I want to do better. Can, can, we, can we financially do it? So we looked at the numbers, and we started putting away a little bit more money. Folks, we are giving away this December a two-hour show, $1,500 worth of prizes. We're giving away 10 $100 gift cards and two grand prizes of $250 gift cards times two for a total of $1,500. And you know what we're doing that no one else does is we will even send the money to someone outside the country. If you live outside of the country and you support Double Barrel Gaming, we will get you your prize winning. Even if we got to spend, send it you in like in, in a send the cash, we'll send the cash instead of the gift card. The only caveat there, folks, is Mrs. Boom and I only use PayPal. That is it. No cash apps, no checks, no nothing like that. It's if you want the prize and you're outside of the United States, we will represent and we you pay nothing. We pay all all denominational fees and transfer fees. We we cover all of that, but we only use PayPal. And you got to use the money to buy Sonic, right? Boom. That's the other caveat. You have to buy ten copies of Sonic. Otherwise Thank you. you don't get the Thank you. There you go. Real quick, I got a new name for Spider Man. You're gonna love this. Bug <laughs> Snacks too. Uh -oh. <laughs> No, don't do that, that's awful. That's awful. <laughs> I love it. Uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, a big thank you for being here. We had almost 700 people here again, which is an amazing amount of people. If you're finding the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. And, of course, hit the bell icon so you know when I go live. And before you get out of here, hit the like button. And, of course, I'm going to close out the show with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully, one day it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you you're going to have an awesome day. So take care of everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. Hey.